Thank you for the call, uh, Rodney. One eight five five four hundred Savage. One eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. You know, it, it, it's amazing. So I I have three children, eighteen, three teenagers, eighteen, sixteen, and thirteen. And anyone that deals with them will say, boy. Children are so well behaved. They're so calm. They look you in the eye. They talk. They. I know that seems odd, but a lot of kids, you know, maybe maybe your children have the friends come through. They never even acknowledge either their own parents or they go over to someone's home. I I am a big believer in uh, in one of the parents staying home. In 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 a lot of people don't like to hear about it, but I think a, a a huge myth is the element of daycare. That somehow, ah, the kids will be fine. They learn to socialize. They, lo- You know, that from the moment the child has to be woken up and then they're rushed, because they're going to rush, get dressed quick and eat, eat quick and get in the car. We're going to rush you over there, drop them off, then i got to get to work, blah, blah, blah. And then afterwards, they're rushing to pick them up and get them home. And it just becomes, you know, let's feed them dinner and then give them a bath and get them to bed, da 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 And everything's... Even if the child's misbehaving, well, you know, let me just get them to bed, and then the next day, drop them at daycare. The clock's always running. And on a weekend, if the kids are having a bad weekend, just try to get through it, because then on Monday, we drop them at daycare anyway. I think that's a big part of it. And um, and then it, and it starts that that young. Line, line four is Gary listing on WMAL in Washington, D.C. Gary, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Gary. Hey, how are you doing? Uh, Good, Gary. Go right ahead. Last, last spring, I'm checking out in a safe way. And there's a high school age, very young, six, 16, 17, uh, cash register, and a, she was a girl, and a guy doing the banking around the same age. And they were talking about what they were doing for the summer, and the one, the cashier, was going to go over to France to study in France. So I was like, you know, I'm minding my own business. And she said, why don't, you know, aren't you going to go? And he said, no, I don't, I don't have any money. Our parents have the money. And, just, and she said, well, it's free. It's all free. It's free money. You can just get it by selling blah, 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 application app. And she was giving him the application, you know, the name of the application. And look, and I, I, I couldn't help but interject myself. And I said, well, it's not free money. It comes from taxes. That's someone else's money that's paying for you to do that. And the young girl looked at me and said, well, it's free to me. <laughs> that's and, right. and, all, and I kind of went on. It clicked in my head. And I said, oh, there you go. You know, just give people free stuff which we all know is the quicksand, the trap. And and that's, that's the age group and, and their parents, too. It's free to them. I don't care if it's your money. Right. It's free. And, and well, when, you say, when you say what's the appeal, free stuff is very appealing. It's wrong. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Gary, if it's free, it's for me. But wait, explain again, how is the trip free? Is it, is it was a grant of some kind? Well, that's what she said. The school has the money. Oh, okay. Made. The school's got the money. I think, right. Yeah. And you're trying to explain it's coming from somewhere. It's not free. Right. It's not. Right. I, I actually use the words, and of course, I'm, I probably look like a geezer, you know, because I'm from the, you know, the, the 60s and 70s generation. And I said, you know, which I do believe our generation really started the whole thing, unfortunately. But. You know, the me generation and now generation. <laughs> Gary, I like her saying to you, though, well, it's free for me. <laughs> free to me. And I said, and all of us going through my head was, well, you know, she's a kid, I'm not going to argue with her. I'm supposed to want to get out of the store, but I'm going, there's the problem. Yes, there is the problem. Thank you for the call, Gary. 1 855 400 Savage. You know, if it was one of our New York listeners, these stories coming out of New York are very concerning. I see the Daily News has exclusive. Cops investigating second anti-white attack in Brooklyn this week. And the perpetrator said, this is from Malcolm X, cracker. C-R-A-C-K-A. Police are investigating a second anti-white bias incident in Brooklyn. The attacker uh, calling the victim names. 51-year-old male told cops... When a black man ran up, knocked him to the ground. This is from Malcolm X before storming off. It's like a small blurb in the Daily News. Can you imagine if that was vice versa? And, uh, well, Sanders and Sharpton would have had a rally up where that had happened. Let me go to line nine. Greg is listening on WFTL in Florida. Greg, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Greg. Hey. 
I think that the lack of any kind of immigration policy that we have now, especially the lack of repercussions for illegals, has, as a nation, made us almost spitefully entitled. The whole, I mean, people talk the whole white privilege thing. I think a lot of us see the disconnect uh, between the rules that they have to follow as immigrants and the rules that we're expected to follow as citizens. Um, I was fishing a river, and the game inland fisher, fisheries officer was walking towards me, and he walked past a group of immigrants, and they had a net cast across the whole river and just walked right past them. I, this is, the, it's illegal, you can't do that. Right. But he had the gall to then check my license. <laughs> As they have the net, thank you, Greg, across the entire river. Yeah, that seems about right. one 855 savage The website is michaelsavage.com. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. More of your phone calls ahead. This is the Savage Nation. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in. For Dr. Michael Savage, as always, visit our website, michaelsavage.com. How about the doctor's new book coming out, the ebook, Diseases Without Borders? Get all the details about it at michaelsavage.com. Let's go to line six. Anthony is listening on WABC in New York City. Anthony, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi. Uh, my point is just going back to uh, the entitlement issue you were talking about. I actually employ a lot of people who work for modest wages uh, in a retail environment. Uh, most of them are great people. Um, but uh, yeah, I just like to talk about entitlement and why people don't, you know, have a, a bad work ethic and don't really want to work or pick and choose when the days they want to work or they're constantly calling out sick and they don't care if they lose their job. Because the problem is, um, you know. They can go out and get another job, a similar type paying job, you know, very quite easily anywhere else. Uh, and the trap that they're falling into uh, when they listen to candidates like Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton when they're, you know, giving out all of these free goodies, what they don't realize is, is that if they're working for modest wages and then you add up the value of all the, of all the you know, entitlements that are being handed out, like housing, food, clothing, free college or free education, which I think people should get an education, but when you add up the value of all of these and add that on top of the modest wages that they're working for, let's say 18000 or $20,000 a year, but you're getting $40,000 of entitlements, they have no incentive to further themselves because if they're working currently for $20,000, let's say, for example, yep. there's no way that they're ever going to move up and find a job worth, you know, that pays $80,000 because they'll just always stay where they are. They'll have no incentive to go through the work necessary to be able to get a job that will pay for and more, uh, you know, to compensate for all of the benefits that they're getting. So they're that they're receiving. You're, you're exactly right, Anthony, and I appreciate the call. The website is michaelsavage.com. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, and you're listening to The Savage Nation. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. I think the president has signaled, uh, while still remaining neutral, that he supports uh, Secretary Clinton's candidacy and would prefer to see her as the nominee. He won't. Uh, officially embrace her uh, unless and until uh, it's clear that she's going to be the nominee. I think uh, you know he's maintaining that tradition of not uh, intervening in a in a party primary. Uh, but I, I don't think there's any doubt that that he wants Hillary to win the nomination and believes that she would be uh, the best candidate in the fall and, and and the most effective as president in carrying forward what he's achieved. How's that working out for her? You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro filling in. For Dr. Michael Savage, who will be back tomorrow, by the way. He will be back tomorrow. That is Jay Carney of the White House. Boy, that explains a lot. What's the good news? The president is supporting Hillary. Maybe that explains why she got blown out in New Hampshire. 
Run out of town on a rail, as Mr. Potter would have said. If you'd like to be part of the program, you can call in 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Visit the website, michaelsavage.com. I check it first thing every morning. Right now, you can order Dr. Savage's new ebook, Diseases Without Borders. Diseases Without Borders. And that's what we're dealing with right now. This is an epidemic that's about to take hold in the United States with the Zika virus. 20 states now? Well, read the latest. He's always ahead of it. Diseases Without Borders, the new ebook from the New York Times number one best selling author, Michael Savage, available at michaelsavage.com. You're also going to see various stories, and, and I'll tell you, when I check the Savage website, the first place I see and hear about these stories is right here at michaelsavage.com. Whether it be the Iran uh, military government broadcasting images of the U.S. sailor in tears, or the latest on the Muslim baggage handler, or even the fact that Dr. Savage says, hey, quarantine these travelers from the Zika infected nation instead of letting them come into the United States. Go to the website, michaelsavage.com. You're on Facebook, good. Find Michael Savage on Facebook. Click the like button, and then also follow the program on Twitter. It's A Savage Nation on Twitter. We're going to get to your uh, phone calls, but it is interesting how that breaks down regarding the fact that the Obama White House is basically, as much as they're supporting Hillary, she got crushed by Bernie Sanders Tuesday night. They're going to debate again tonight. But the Clinton campaign seems to be in free fall. Money is flowing into the Bernie Sanders campaign. You know, I, I don't agree with uh, uh, probably 99% of things that Bernie Sanders says. But I, I will at least say, and I think you'd agree on this, the guy does seem authentic. Whereas Hillary, if you're a woman listening right now, Boy, they thought it was a layup, didn't they? They thought it was automatic. The amount of women that are not going to vote for her, and especially young women. But if you're a woman listening, I mean, they they cannot believe this whole business of the glass ceiling and it's a special place in hell if you don't vote for her and you're going to hell and and, um, Gloria Steinem. Oh, a lot of these women, they just with Bernie Sanders because that's where the boys are. I mean, it's like one insult after another. But I'd, I'd like to hear if you're a, a woman where you've got where Hillary went wrong because she obviously went wrong. And you have to admit, it is enjoyable to watch the Clintons in complete meltdown <laughs> at this point. The only thing that's going to be better is when she starts to fire some of these people and then they're going to leak things to the media. And that's coming. So, because even the Hillary supporters are like, you know, do something, be sharper. Um, There's a story that I was just reading about that off the Drudge Report, where the donors are saying to Hillary, like, come on, go after them, sharpen your message, do something. But don't just stand there. You know, we're donating to you, but you're, you're getting crushed. Let's find out what you think. Let's go out to the your calls, starting with... Karen on line eight is listing on WABC in New York City. Karen, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hello. To get to your point as a woman uh, with an MBA and two children that are not entitled to anything around my household, what Hillary did wrong was not hitting Bill over the head with a frying pan when he cheated on her with Monica. <laughs> be a real woman, take control of your family, and be true to yourself. And the country, we all know it's a game. We all know she is a carpetbagger, and she does not deserve to be in the White House, okay? But is that what really is hurting her, Karen, what you just described? Do you think that's what it is? I think she's too fake, and she tries to be an amoeba, and she tries to... She, she, yes, I think that's what's hurting her. She's not true to herself, and she's not real. So, now, why are they, why Karen? Why are the young voters going with Bernie Sanders? Because they want something for nothing. In my school district, Elwood, New York, my son, okay, was the only one in his class that knew who the vice president of this country was. Okay, it starts with an education. It starts what, with teaching. Now, what 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 grade is your son in? He's in sixth grade. 
sixth grade, and he was the only one in his class that knew.